Welcome to Offscreen. This week we're reading Move That Body by Lucia N. Yellow and Paul W. Downs. Five friends rent a beach house in Miami for a bachelorette weekend and accidentally kill a male stripper. So what do you know about these two? Um, we just did a quick Google search. They are a couple. They're dating, and they're also a uh-huh. comedy partners. Yeah. And they both, uh, they're both writers for uh, Broad City. Um, Which, are you a fan of that show? I actually haven't seen it. I've heard oh, it's quite good. Oh, shit. I like it. I like it a lot. Um, yeah. And they met in, uh, UCB. And okay. I guess the rest is they're history. up and coming comedy writers. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, wait, a little bit of an aside. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say I saw Batman vs. Superman last night. And How was it? It was almost as bad as the, the fake script would have <laughs> you believe. Um, like, he actually got some things pretty close to right in, in like a very bad way. Well, presumably it was based on... It was actually based on, like, the Death of Superman comic? Or yeah, that... so I guess there are probably certain things that just they knew were going to happen based on that, but, oh boy. Let's, it was, let's it was throw a mess. spoiler tag in here and then just tell me, like, the two worst things about the movie. Um, okay, well, okay, here you go. Yeah. The, the fight between Batman and Superman, the titular battle, yeah. the whole point of the movie, the whole fight was just orchestrated by Lex Luthor to pit them against each other. Right, just as in the fake screenplay that you read. Yeah, and the only reason that it it happened was that Superman couldn't get a word in. He started to tell... All he had to do was tell Batman, like, Hey, wait a minute, wait, 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 stop. Lex Luthor's just putting, this, putting us up to this. And before he could get the word out, Batman, like, you know, punched him or something, I forget. But, like, he just couldn't explain and so they just fought and that was the only reason that the fight proceeded right he could have at any point in the fight just been like no this is a trick and then the only reason that it stopped batman had used some kryptonite and superman and had him pretty much on the ropes he could have dispatched superman damn the only reason that it stopped was because superman mentioned that lex Luthor at the this same time has his mother held hostage and Superman's mother? Superman's mother, whose name is Martha. Right. So he's like, no, they're going to kill Martha. And Batman's like, why did you say that name? Because Batman's mom is also named Martha, and he what? was still upset about his parents and that whole and thing. that made him think, oh, hey, Superman and I aren't so dissimilar. Well, no, he like actually thought he was talking about his mom. Oh. So basically the only reason that he doesn't end up just killing Superman when he has a chance is because their moms both happen to have the same name. It's a pretty dope coincidence. <laughs> dope, or is it really stupid? <laughs> um, does Superman die in the end? Yeah. Yeah? But then at the very end, the very final shot, oh. they're, they're throwing like dirt on his grave, Yeah. and some of the dirt starts to float just for a second, and then it cuts to credits. So he doesn't actually die. It's just it's got exactly what I said, right? Yeah. They have course. to have their cake and eat it too. They gotta, gotta have him die. Well, of course Superman's not gonna die. No, I mean, and there's no, no they're, more they're setting up Superman the whole, in the universe. Yeah, they're setting up the whole thing. They they have Wonder Woman is in it. Okay. And is Aquaman there in the beginning? No, but they do allude to him and they, they kinda set up their uh, I, I don't even know who the other ones are. There's like a whole team of Flash. Them. Is Flash he, there? Yeah, he was there and then this That's other, Ezra Miller, right? I don't know. Oh, never mind then. Anyway, huh. just wanted to get that in as a little follow-up to last yeah. week. Uh, but back to Move That Body. Yeah. It appeared on um, this past year's Blacklist. Oh, yeah. This is how we found it. Yeah. Um, I can get right into the synopsis if yeah, you want. Yeah. All right. On top of running for city council, 29-year-old Jess is also engaged. She takes a break from her campaign to meet four friends in Miami for a bachelorette's weekend. There's some tension among the girls at first, different friend groups competing to be Jess's favorite, but it's nothing a little cocaine can't fix. After hitting the clubs, they're back at the beach house they've they've rented when a man arrives at the door. They order Jess a stripper. He gets to dancing, 
but when one of the heavier girls leaps on him in a fit of passion, the man falls to the ground and cracks his head open. He's dead. Jess, in a panic over what the headlines could mean for her election, determines to get rid of the evidence, but in the process of hiding the body, two more men arrive at the beach house looking for him. Turns out the guy wasn't a stripper at all, he was a bank robber, and now his two betrayed accomplices are looking for their share of the loot he made off with. The girls work together to stop them, and when the cops finally catch up, Jess and the others are seen as heroes. Within a week, Jess has won the election, and her friends have all grown closer for the crazy weekend they've shared. Nice. <laughs> that was a really quick one. That's fine. I mean, what more could you have said? Well, one thing I really did want to include was there's a subplot with her fiancé, Peter. He's trying to get there, and he's, like, driving in his car to Miami, because he tries calling them to check in at one point, and he, like, can't... And it's right after the stripper, or not the stripper, the bank robber has been killed, and so right. they're all flustered, and right. they and don't they, want to be talking on the phone. They kind of hang up on him really abruptly, and he starts to worry that, like, something's going on. He thinks maybe she's, like, cheating on him or something. Because, like, his past six girlfriends have all cheated on him, right. apparently. And it's really funny to me, they, they coin a term in here, his, his bro friends are, like... Dude, you gotta drive out there. You gotta. They say you gotta like pull a sad astronaut, and he's like, "What is a sad astronaut?" And he they tell him this story, which I've actually heard this it's, story. Yeah. Apparently, like two astronauts that were a couple. He well, the girl thought that he was cheating on her, and so she drove out to like catch him in the act, and in order to save time, wore diapers in the car so she wouldn't have to stop to go to the bathroom. So that's what he does. He ends up driving. All the way to Miami from, I don't even know where they actually live, but he's just like drinking Red Bulls the whole time. Oh. What? They live in D.C., right? Oh, I guess, yeah, they they lived in D.C., that's right, they mentioned that. But yeah, so he pulls a sad astronaut. Yeah, but he's like popping out around, pounding Red Bull. Right, and right. And, and diapers. And actually, at the end, it's him that kind of saves the day, like, they're, they're held at gunpoint by these robber dudes. They've, like, gotten rid of one of them, basically. They've dispatched with one of them, but then this other one has them all at gunpoint, and Peter, like, just plows into the house in his car and kills the other guy. Which, for, like, no good reason. Why? He's all hopped up on Adderall and Red Bull. Yeah, so? That doesn't mean you drive into a house. It doesn't mean you don't drive into a house. He's, Certainly it does. He's not in his right state of mind. Certainly clearly. he does. I thought there was some really... There's not really... enough There's not enough Red Bull and Adderall in the world to get you to drive into a house. His pee was glowing green, though. They said that. That's a lot. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. But anyway, that didn't that didn't take away from it for me. I still... I thought it was, uh, on the whole, really, really funny. Like, this is really? one of the funniest scripts I've read in a long time. Wow, interesting. Yeah. You don't think so? No, I didn't really find it funny at all. I mean, there were, like, a few a few good moments, but... Yeah, I guess most of the jokes didn't land for me. Like the the running like tampon joke. Oh yeah, was just like it, was like a it felt very contrived. It's like know. a secret code the girls had when they needed to talk to one of the other ones in private. They would just say like, "Hey, do you have a tampon? I need a tampon." And make it like really awkward for whoever else was the, in the room to like just let them leave. so that they could yeah go off and escape from whatever situation they were in. But it just felt really forced, and they brought it up, brought it, came back to it so many times. They only did it, like, maybe three, maybe four, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot. In no, like... it's like a full screenplay, I don't know. They, I thought they actually did a lot of really good setups and payoffs of even just, like, little things. Um, they set stuff up pretty well and then pay they, it off. They use a lot of the items in the house really well. Like, there's a bunch of stuff in the garage, just like a jet ski, which at one point they try to dump the body in the ocean using the jet ski. I thought that part was really funny, too. They just, like, throw him over the back of the jet ski, and one of the girls just, like, drives off into the ocean and then, like, whips it around so it flings him off. And then, of course, his body, like, washes up later, and they have to deal with it again. But I thought there were a lot of fun little, like, setups and Yeah, and I guess my, maybe my biggest issue is just how one-note the characters were. They're all, like, very cliché types, and yeah. they never go beyond that. Yeah, that's true. I, I sort of um, had like in... they have the the businesswoman and then like the bohemian chick and right. then the fat chick and then right and then Jess is like I guess like the more the straight laced one. Well, I know, and like that was the point. I guess Jess is supposed to be sort of like the uh, the straight man, so to speak, like just sort of the one for all the other characters to play off of. Yeah, but 
it was she was too plain for me. I had no sense of like her personality. No. That was one one note that I did have. Um and yeah, the others the others were bordering on like Alice is just Alice is like the bigger girl and right. woman and she's just like absurd and over the top throughout the screenplay. There's just Yeah. Like when Jess says at one point you're just too much. Yeah, she's like way too much. Right. She's a very overbearing friend. Like she's really competitive to be Jess's best friend. Yeah. That right. that really actually did drive things a little bit. A and little bit. There was a bit of a reconciliation, like at the end. There, there was like a really big, long dialogue scene at the end that I thought was pretty well done, well handled, where they just all kind of are fighting over what to do, and it, all the feelings come out, and that's what that's when Jess sort of admits to Alice right. that she thinks she's. But like nothing new comes to light there. Like it's all kind of like don't don't you want? Wouldn't that have been more effective if we like learn something new about their relationships in that as opposed uh, to them just I, telling us what we already know? I guess, know? but I mean, it's one thing for us to know. It's another for, like, the characters to tell each other how they really feel for the first time. Like, Alice yeah. was pretty oblivious to how it, Jess felt about her, and I think that was a big enough deal. Because she's just oblivious in general. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which I guess is fine, but... I want to talk for a minute about the sort of way or the style in which the descriptions were written because I thought it was pretty funny at times and it took a lot of liberties with the usual screenwriting format like there were there were like emoticons in the action lines in the descriptions um there's one where like Jess just gets out of the shower and then she's attacked or she like fights with one of the robbers uh uh-huh and the last line of the description and she's still nude winky face right right that was a good one which I don't know. Is that effective for you, though? I usually don't like that, but I think the only reason I was okay with it here, because it's, it's not usually stuff that I feel like the audience is going to be able to benefit from. That's what bugs me. Yeah. Like, you're not going to be able to see that in the movie when it's made. Nor does it inform, like, the actor or the director. Well, it, I think it can a little bit sort of get the tone across. Yeah, maybe. The tone's pretty clear, I guess, though, for me. Even if you removed all of that. There were other ones that I thought I thought were really pretty funny. And I think the reason I was okay with it was because it seemed like the writers were just really having fun. Even if it wasn't stuff that was going to matter or was going to come across in the, the final movie, it, it does go a long way for me. Yeah, it definitely comes across as though they're having fun. Yeah. Um... There was another part that I thought was really funny, which was that... I didn't even mention this in the synopsis, but there's another guy that shows up who they think he's dressed as a cop, and they freak out at first, and, like, Frankie immediately just knocks him out cold because they think he's, like, investigating what's happened. And then when they're moving his body, his clothes all, like, Velcro off of him, and they realize he's a stripper. He's the actual stripper that they ordered. Right. So then they're like, all right, well, who was this? Well, for, for a minute, there's just some uncertainty as to who is actually the stripper. I mean, clearly that cop is is a stripper, but was the first guy the one that they actually ordered, and this is another guy? Anyway, the way they figure it out is that one of the girls who ordered the stripper says that there was, like, a dick pic on the internet when she, like, called to order this guy. So she has to see both of their dicks to be able to determine which one is the one that they actually ordered. Which, at the end of the day, maybe doesn't really matter at this, this point. One of them is dead, and one of them is knocked out, and there's nothing they can do about that. But it was a really funny plot contrivance to force them to have to look at both of these guys' dicks. Um, maybe we should shift gears. I've been talking mostly about what I like. I guess you've been kind of more back and forth, but what what were your main complaints? I mean, I think I already said them. Just the, kinda, the characters not being the, the one differentness of or, the characters. Yeah. It doesn't really get f- like. It's kind of in like this weird place where, it's not really absurd. It is in moments, but not consistently, and it just felt pretty repetitive to me. I guess. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Fair, I mean, I don't enough. know what else, what more to say. Like, there were jokes that were funny, but it wasn't, like, particularly smart funny in, like, the way yeah. Bridesmaids is, or... Oh, I was definitely going to compare this to Bridesmaids, though. Like, just tonally, yeah. I think, and 
obviously. But those characters had, and maybe the actors will bring more dimension to to the to the. Yeah, I'm sure that's how these things always go. But But I I thought there was enough here that really made me laugh. I I did have to warm up to it a little bit. The beginning, I wasn't into it as much, but uh, I don't know. It it kept it kept up the pace and it kept up the jokes. Yeah, it moves. It's a really really, fast read, which is something. Yeah, it didn't it didn't strike me as super repetitive. I don't really have that much to complain about. I'm I'm struggling to just stop myself from recounting all the different moments in here. Well, it seems like you like a lot of them. I yeah, I did like the diaper More thing than again. I did. He was it was really stupid again. I admit that, but no, he, the sad astronaut thing was like the best part for me. I oh think. okay, but yeah, I was gonna mention the part where he's at a gas station and his bank calls him because they think he's like his identity's been stolen because he's suddenly like making purchases in Miami. And they say, like, press 1 if this is correct, or press 2, whatever. He accidentally presses the wrong button just because he's shaking so much from all the Red Bull. So they, like, freeze his card. Yeah. So then he can't... You don't think that's flimsy? It is, but, like, I don't even care with a movie like this. Just get me to the jokes. I don't care how you get there. Like, but the... yeah. it's close enough. I get I get the idea. And, like, so that's that's, all... that's why he has to, like, beg for money at this truck stop. So that's just all just setting up, like, a series of exchanges with the other patrons of the gas station. I guess that's what I'm saying is, like, I don't care as much about how you set up the joke. You Just that you set it up enough so that you can get to the, the payoff. Of, I guess... Which was that, like, he was basically... He looked just like a crazy homeless person in a diaper asking for money at the gas station. I don't know. Like, they felt like obvious jokes to me. I don't, I don't know how to better articulate it, but, like... He's wearing a diaper, like, they, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, should we... Like, maybe it's, like, too much of, like, a one-to-one payoff thing, where it just feels like they're establishing something so they can pay it off a little bit later, or, like, set up a joke, and then that's the end of that joke, and then they move on. I'm trying to think back to some of the other scripts that you maybe liked, um, like, that were comedies. I thought Set It Up was a lot better. Really? I, I didn't feel like Set It Up was as... It's not the same as in terms tight of tone. And, yeah, or as tight in the, the structure either. But in terms of character, I think they're a lot more substantial. Um, I mean, this is better than Babysitter. Oh, yeah, the Babysitter was pretty bad. In my opinion. I don't know, we haven't read a lot like this. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I guess if you are just judging it by, like, like the the basic terms of its genre, it kind of meets those well. Yeah. But if I'm, like, making a movie or if I have a say in making a movie, I'm not going to choose this movie because it's not, like, one that I particularly find. I I just don't think that um, you can judge it too much on the actual, like, plot or the, the way they set up the jokes. I feel like the bread and butter of these types of scripts is just, like, sheer volume of of jokes and how how many and they clearly situations. landed better for you than they did yeah. for yeah how many different like situations can you contrive to just get as many jokes in as possible and i think it did a pretty good job of that it kept me laughing consistently well, i guess for me it's like it's good yes to judge something on its own terms but then i think you also have to consider like the merits of those terms see and you always those... get so lofty like with the deadpool thing you were like Explaining why it was bad for society and stuff, but like, well, it, yeah, <laughs> and I stand by that. But like, <clears throat> I, I think it did a good job of what it was setting out to do. Like, you would recommend or you would value this over something that had a greater, more aspirations, but wasn't as successful. No, I'm not saying that. Like, if it's a super ambitious screenplay that's like sprawling and covers all this time and all these characters and goes into much more depth and like yeah i'm gonna give that more more points or whatever um but i just think there is something to be said about executing really well on what what you're trying to do even if what you're trying right. to do is maybe not as noble or whatever you want no call and it, i don't but... i don't no not noble it's not the right word okay but and i don't disagree with that i just don't think this is particularly well executed either I guess that's that's what it comes like, down even to. Like even even if it is hitting, even if it is like fulfilling these genre requirements, and it's pretty tightly written and it reads well. What else is there, man? That's like, I think. But this, it's not like 
there, but the substance of it isn't like particularly funny. I well, that's like where it, I the think, jokes are there, but the jokes aren't terrific. I think that's just where we disagree. Yeah, I, I, think I, so I thought too. they were really funny, and even then, like you said, I think especially with comedies, it's the performance and the actors that is going to bring so much to it. And I think there's a lot here that a lot of like really good comedic actors or actresses could bring to this that would but really... those comedic actors could bring their stuff to anything and it no, would be awesome. I don't think that's necessarily true. Well, they're still, like, they're still going to be like, hilarious. There are they're plenty... still going to be very talented and hilarious. They could bring that to a more well-rounded there screenplay. There are plenty of examples of movies where a really funny actor totally screwed the pooch because it was just a really bad script. It was poorly directed or there just wasn't. I mean, that, the... that, that can all be true of this one too. But I think we especially we could get Zach Snyder to direct oh gosh. this. It's a, but especially true of like the writing. I think I mean maybe I'm biased, but I think the writing more than anything builds the foundation, which determines whether it's actually going to be able to be made funny or not by the performances. And but like, you're saying that these are basic. But you're you're acknowledging that these are basically like one note characters, like cliche y- types. Yeah, yeah, they were bordering. So, it's like, on so if anything, then it is. I don't think bordering, but. <laughs> If anything, then it's just like a blank slate, right? I don't think it is, though. I think there's enough in here that you could you could still use, that you could still play off of, that is specific enough, the jokes and the situations, that it's more than just the characters being like stereotype stock characters. Um, but, but I was going to say, there are plenty of examples of really funny actors or comedians in movies that end up being really bad, and it doesn't necessarily always matter if the the character it doesn't always matter if the comedian is a good comedian if the script is bad then they won't be able to save it and i think this script is good enough that that's not a risk i think if you get some good people in these roles this is going to be funny yeah i mean maybe i guess we disagree about like the the bones of it then yeah Whatever. So, what's your verdict? Um, I would pass on both. What? Oh man. Really? I don't know. I don't think that should come as a surprise to you. I mean, you were not crazy about it. I could tell yeah. from you talking about. It. I thought you'd at least consider one or the other. But I was prepared to. Uh, I'm. I almost. I'm not gonna give a recommend. I guess I'm gonna consider both. I'm gonna consider both. Okay. Uh, I almost want to recommend. Do I, you really? I almost want to. But re- what? I, I don't get that at all. I I thought that they really squeezed every bit of comedy out of the situation. Like, there's so many other screenplays that we haven't recommended. Like we didn't, you didn't recommend Passengers either of them. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. We need. To, I I'm really thinking I need to make. I need to go back. We need to go back and, and, and make a list and make. Yeah, Can like we put like a separate page on the website. or Make something? a record of all of our. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I'll do that. Um, that'll be fun. Like this, this maybe reminded me of Murder of a Cat in a way, like the level oh, of quality. Come on, that one was terrible. But I, I don't know what's so great about this. I, it's just a better quality of of jokes, I think. I guess that's where I guess that's what it comes down to. Ultimately, yeah. is that you found it funny and I did it. Like, like I said, <laughs> I mean that's that's what I most of all I'm going to judge this kind of a script on. It's a it's a just a funny crazy premise comedy script so it's a good pre- it's a pretty good premise yeah it's a nice concise premise so what else? i just yeah. think i mean what else i what mean else that's I not go on that's not enough whatever it's um, like a good premise that's like not well executed in my opinion fine i don't remember if i passed on passengers wait you're talking about the i don't think you passed you you're talking about the john spates one right the That's w- a better one, in my opinion, yeah. Right, right. The other one was the weird microbes one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that one as much. Um, anyway. I mean, I think it's just, it's hitting the beats, but, like, it's not elevating any of that. And I think that should be the minimum. You have very high standards, I guess. I don't know. I don't, like, I don't mind it. It doesn't need to be, like, changing the genre or, like, a landmark film for me to like it. Well, yeah, I agree with that. That's what you're making it sound like, though. No, it just needs to be better than, like, fine and, like, familiar and cliche. Okay. I think we're going in circles now. I guess. Um, let's, let's finish this. So, so yeah, hit your, finish your verdict. 
Oh, did you ever get? Oh, that? I thought I thought I did. I, I think, think so. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna consider both of them. But if I can use a Stevenism, it's a gonna be a strong consider. Did I say recommend just now? I meant cons- no, I'm going to consider, consider. I'm going to consider both of them, but it's going to be a strong consider for both Don't because you're always qualifying. To me. You can, I can qualify as much as I want. You're like, oh, it's a, it's a mild consider. No, oh, it's a hard know, pass. A of, I'm, I'm waiting to use, pull that one out. I want to do a hard pass. Well. I don't think I've ever said that. No, but I think that's that's something you would say. Um, you know, plenty of plenty of places have a strong consider and a weak consider on their coverage sheet, and right. you can circle those just as easily as a normal consider or a recommend. I just like the simplicity, the purity of the past consider recommend. That's enough distinction. I guess I just want to bring a little more nuance to our ratings. That's just the whole story of this episode. <laughs> uh, okay. We're on Twitter. We're on the internet. Let's do all that. Yeah. You you always do it pretty well, I think. Um, one time we should do it in the middle of the episode, because now it feels like people just are going to turn it off, you know? Um, but the people that are going to turn it off are going to be the people that already know about it anyway, I feel like. Or the people that just don't want to see us listen to us plug ourselves for yeah i don't know okay anyways ospodcast.com email at is email is at info po- <laughs> ah. <clears throat> website is ospodcast.com our email is info at ospodcast.com we're on twitter at ospodcast um you can find us on facebook mm-hmm. it's facebook.com slash ospodcast you can rate us on itunes that'd be dope i think that's everything yeah, oh, you can find us on YouTube, too, and you you should subscribe, too. We only have four <coughs> subscribers, but it seems like a lot of people are listening. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. I don't know. I'm seeing the numbers, and it seems like we're getting a lot of people, but I almost wanted to do a thing. Maybe this will be a different week, but I wanted to, like, ask for feedback or opinions or, you know, more more directly interact with, with people. Yeah, well, you know, it'd be cool, and we haven't asked in a while, but if anyone has any scripts that they want us to read, yeah. maybe... Yeah, let us know. I and mean, we'll try and find them. There's no guarantee. Because we don't have a lot of stuff lined up really yet. Well, we have a lot of stuff. We just haven't decided, decided what went, it's going to yeah. be. Yeah. But we're always open to suggestions. Um, speaking of which, next week we're going to read another Blacklist script because Steven says it sounds cool, so if it's bad, it's his fault. And it's called Boomtown by Matt King. A slick corporate investigator with a closely guarded secret discovers a sinister criminal conspiracy in North Dakota oil boom country.